So welcome to all of you. Today we will revise the mathematics paper first, that is the calculus of several variables. So course code is the MT two thirty one. Chapter first is limit and continuity. Okay. So here, so if f is a real valued function of two variables, then it is we will write this as r two to r. This is a real valued function of two variables. So we can write this is what f of x one is some x square plus y square and so on something like this. This is real value. So that means what this is the domain. R two is the domain. The function of two variables. This domain is R two, and this is the codomain. And range. This is what. Note that the range is always subset of codomain. The range of set is always subset of the codomain. So that means what? The range of the real valued function of two variables, R three variable or four variable, is the subset of R. Is a subset of R. Okay, so that means it is a real valued function. Its its codomain is the set of the real number. So that means what the range set is a subset of the real valued function. Okay, and so if a function of three variable, we we'll write this f r three to R. This is r three to R. Real valued function of three variable. So that means this is like an f of x, y, z, and so on. Okay. Uh, also, the range of these three variable, uh, three uh, real valued function of three variable is the subset of the set of the real number. Real number. Okay. So now, here main thing is what the important thing is how to find the domain and the codomain uh, range of the function. Domain and range of the function. This is the important thing here. Okay. Suppose we have this function f of x y. So here what uh, domain and codomain are not given. So this is what root of x plus y plus one upon x minus one. Okay. Suppose this is a function. So if you want to find the value of this one, three two or anything now, you have to find the value of this function. We will find the domain of this function and Domain of this function and okay, so just we will find domain of this function only. Okay, so f of three two. What is f of three two? What do I have to do? We have to replace x as three and y is equal to two only. So this is what. So three plus two plus one upon three minus one. So this is five. Uh, this is six. Root six upon two. Root six upon two. You may write this as this is what root three into root two upon two. So two we can write. Like this, so this one, so one root two get cancelled, so three by two. This is a simplified answer. This is a simplified answer. Root three upon root two. All this we may write this as root of three by two. Several ways we can write this. Okay, so this this is a this is also correct answer. All these three are the correct answer. Okay, now I have to find the domain of the function. So for domain, domain means what? This is a domain. And this is what so this is the codomain now. The set of the real number is the codomain. This is your R two now. This is your R two. So what happened here? Every element. This is a function. This is a function. Means what? So we have to find a domain such way that this is the function. That means what? Every point of this, you have to find domain of this one. You have to find the domain. Means what? Every point of this has the and has unique image in. The codomain. Every point of this D has a unique image in this codomain. Okay, so you have to find sir. See what happened if you take x is equal to one. If you take like the all point like this, one y. So for one y, this is what one minus one is zero. Your denominator is zero. That means set up all the points. There are infinitely many points. One y. So they don't have the image. So that means what we have to. Exclude this point from the set of the real number from from, the, uh, from R two. We have to exclude such point because for those point we don't have the image. These point don't have the image, so they should not be in the domain. So we have to we have to find a domain such way that every point has an image. So that means what here again this is what root x. This belongs to R. If x and if and only if x is greater than or equal to zero. 
So that means what? You have you x plus y greater than x plus y plus one greater than zero and x not equal to one. So if you choose x y belongs to R two such way that x plus y you have to choose x and y such way that x plus y plus one is greater than zero. Uh, greater than or equal to zero doesn't matter. Greater than or equal to zero and x not equal to one. Okay, only those for those point have the image in uh, those point have the image in D now here. Suppose this is your D now. Only these points. So the set of all x y such way that x plus y greater than or equal to zero, x not equal to one. So your domain, this is your domain of this function. Okay, so domain of this function is this. So you have to take the care of this one. Have to take the care of this one. Okay. Now we we'll take a second function now. We'll take a second function. F of x y. F of x y is equal to l and l is log y square minus x. Now also you know that log of the negative number does not exist. Log of the negative number does not exist. Uh, and log of negative and log of zero also does not exist. So only problem is here now. So what we have to do? This is minus x is strictly greater than zero. So you have to restrict your x y belongs to R two such way that y square is greater than. Uh, this you may write this what y square is greater than or not greater than equal to only greater than strictly greater than or x. You may write this like this. All are same now. All are same. The way of writing is different only, but the meaning of all are the same. All are the domain now. The, they are the same domain now. Okay. So meaning of all are same now here. Only the way of writing is different now. Okay. So here also you can find f of three uh, two suppose. So what is that then? F of three two. So x is equal to three, and this is what l now nine minus two. Uh, oh, this is four minus three now. Four minus three. So four minus three. Uh, log one is always zero. With respect to any base, so this is what zero then. This will be zero. This will be zero. Okay, the value of this one is zero. Now, here the only problem is what you have to find domain. You have to find the range. Domain and range is very important uh, for this first point. So find domain. So okay. So what is this? Suppose f of x y. Is equal to root of nine minus x square minus y square. Okay. So now, what is the domain will be what nine minus x square minus y square is greater than equal to zero. So that means what x square minus y square x square plus y square is less than nine. Right. So this is the domain. Means what? This is a circle. This is a circle whose radius. Whose radius is three, is three, and center, and center zero zero. This is the uh, standard circle. This is the standard circle whose radius is three. Standard circle means the center of the circle is four zero, and radius is three now here. Okay. Now, what is the range of this one? Range means what? This. Okay. What are the values of x and y may be? What are the values of x and y may be? So your value is always this is the positive value. Okay. So that means your what value of j is always lies between this. Always this is greater than equal to zero, maybe zero. That means maybe three, maybe this. Okay. Maybe three, maybe this. Okay. So that means what your range is what? So close interval zero three. Because what x square minus y square. Nine minus, and this should be the positive nine minus. That means the maximum value of this one is what root nine. That means three, and the minimum value what this may be. If you take three three, then this is what. Uh, uh, if you take here x square plus y square uh, is a nine suppose. X square plus y square may be nine. So that you uh, so that means what this minimum value is what zero now. Okay, so it is zero. X square plus y square may be nine. Okay. So if it is nine, x square plus y square is equal to nine. Then nine minus nine is zero. That means minimum value is zero and maximum value of this function is three. So you have to find the range. Means what? You have to find the minimum value and maximum value. 
and your what? Uh, that is what maximum value, minimum value. This is your range now. Okay. So now we we'll take the next function. We are just revising this. We have already seen. Suppose this is your f of x y. 6 minus 3x minus twice y. Okay. So what is the domain of this function? Now see here. There is no denominator. So there is no value like this uh, tan inverse and something like this. Log of something like this. So every for every x and y this is well defined. Okay. So domain is what? Domain is R2 now. So all R2, R2 will be your domain. Your domain is what? R2. Because of for any x and y, this is the exist. So domain will be the R2. Okay. Suppose uh, your f of x y like this 4x square plus y square. Okay. So what will be your domain? What will domain? So now again here what? For any x and y this is where defined. For any x and y I are named first. So domain of this is what? R2. Domain of this function is R2. After that we have seen the level curve. So we have seen that this is what we have to take f of x1. f of x1 is equal to k. Okay. And this is nothing but the level curve. Level curve. Okay. So if you want the level curve for f of x1 f of x y 6 minus 3 x minus twice y for k is equal to minus 6 0 6 12 ok so how to find the level curve what we have to do we have to take this 6 minus 3 x minus twice y is equal to k so what happened this this is what minus 6 plus 3 x plus twice y is equal to minus k that means what 3 x plus twice y is equal to 6 minus k. Okay. So what is this? This, this is straight line. A linear function of x and y is nothing but the is nothing but the line. Okay. What is the slope of the line? Slope. Slope is nothing but minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of y. Okay. So minus. What is the coefficient of x? Is 3 upon coefficient of y is 2 is 2 so that means what so level curves are nothing but what the set of all lines the set of lines set of all lines whose slopes are minus 3 by 2 whose slopes are minus 3 by 2 right so that means what this is level curves are nothing but the all lines all line whose slopes are because what if you uh, change the value of k you get a uh, different line but uh, all lines are parallel so their slopes are minus 3 by 2 okay so you know that the two lines are parallel then their slopes are same okay uh, for this function f of x y is equal to root of 9 minus x square minus y square okay. what is the level curve for this one so what you have to do you have to take this as k now you have to take this as well. So this is what a 9 minus x square minus y square is equal to k square. Same thing here. Minus 9 plus x square plus y square is equal to minus k square. So x square plus y square is equal to 9 minus k square. So this is nothing but what? The, this is what? This is level curve. If you change the value of k, you get this. No? You get a different curve. Okay. So that this is what? This is the circle. Whose center is that? 0, 0. And what is the radius? Radius is 9 minus k square. Note that you have to choose the value of k such that 9 minus k square is positive. Okay. So this is nothing but the, uh, the level curve or nothing but all. the circle whose center is at origin and having radius root of 9 minus uh, k square. Okay. And if you want the particular level curve, if you put the particular value of k, you get a particular uh, level curve. Okay. So, And for if this is the for level curve for this one, 
f of x y z is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. Okay, so what is this? Suppose this is k. K is positive at x because x square plus y square plus z square they are all positive. Your k should be the positive. Okay, so what is the level curve for this one? This is the sphere. This is the sphere whose center is at the origin and having radius root k. Having radius root k is the level curve for this one. Okay. Now suppose if you have this function f of x y is equal to cos of x plus twice y. So we have to find the domain and the range of this function, and you have to find the value of this two minus one also. What is f of two minus one? Two minus one. You have to put x is equal to this. So this is what cos zero is equal to one. Cos zero is one. So f of two minus one is equal. Okay. Now for any real number, for any real number. So this is well defined. Cos is well defined, right? So that means what your domain is nothing but R two, and you know that the cos value always lies between minus one and one. So your domain, uh, your uh, range is what minus maximum value of cos is one, minimum value of cos is minus one. So this may happen that it is minus one and one. Okay. So that means if this is the range of this function is minus one one. Okay. So if f of x y If f of x y is equal to one plus four minus y square, so what is f of three one now? What is three one? Okay, we'll directly find three one and we'll find the domain and the range of this function now. Okay, so f of three one. So you have to put x is equal to. Oh, there is no x now. Only you have to put y is equal to one. So what is one then? One plus root three. Four minus one is root three. Okay. Now, what is the range of domain? First, we find domain. So, domain is what? Four minus y square is greater than equal to zero. Right. So that means what? Four will be if you shift uh, four to that side. So this will what? Minus four. Four. Okay. And change the sign. So this will what? Inequality will be reverse. So that means what? This is R x y belongs to R two such that. Y square is less than four. There is no restriction on x, so only you can write y belongs to R such that y square is less. But for domain, so it should be the subset of R two. So therefore, we have to write x y belongs to R two such that y square. There is no restriction on x now here. So this will be domain. What is the range of this function? Then you have to find the maximum value and the minimum value of this one. So y is equal to zero. So then this will what uh, root two. Uh, so that means this is two. So this is what. Uh, Maximum value if you put y is equal to zero, then this will be the maximum value is three now, because what y is equal to zero, then this is root four because y four minus y square, right? So that means if you have to take for maximum value, you have to take y is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, so that this will be the maximum, and y will be the maximum. This will be what four then. If you put y square is equal to four, then this will be zero now. So the minimum value will be one now. So you may write this is what close interval one three. Is the range of this function? Okay, so I hope that you understand the uh, domain and the range of the function. Okay. Now next part is limit and the name of the chapter is actually the limit and continuity. The limit and continuity. Okay. So you are familiar with this. So that means what? This is n delta a b. N delta a b. Implies that root of x minus a square minus y minus b square is less than equal to delta. Is less than equal to delta. Means this is the delta neighborhood of this. Set of all points are this. Okay. And deleted neighborhood of delta. That means what? From the neighborhood of this one, you have to delete the point. This will be the plus y minus b square. Is strictly less than delta. Okay, so this is delta number of delta, and this is the delta. Means what? This is your point A B, and this will be your the set of all x y z are now here. So that the radius is what delta. All points inside this are is the number of number of delta number of A B, and that is called a delta number of A B. Means the set of all points x y such way that this is delta number equal to that means what boundary is also included here. Okay, boundary and the point is also included here now. Here, boundary is also included here. Okay.
now the limit is what we will write this limit x y tends to a b f of x y is equal to l suppose means what means what for epsilon greater than equal to okay so given epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0 such that such that 0 less than root of x minus a square y minus b square less than strictly less than delta implies that mod of f of x y minus n is less than epsilon this is the epsilon delta definition of the limit now this is the epsilon delta definition of limit So you know you are familiar with the algebra of the limit, limit of the product is product of the limit, limit of the sum is sum of the limit and so on. Okay. And one thing in the limit you should remember that the limit along different path is different than limit does not exist. If limit along different path is same then limit will be the exit. Okay. So this is the main point of this limit. Okay. So, algebra of the limit is what? Sum or difference of the limit is okay. Bounded function means what? Mod of f of x, y is less than m. If there exists a real number m such way that mod of f of x, y, that means all values of the f of x, y are less than, well, each absolute value is less than m. This is true for all x, y belongs to the domain. Domain. Domain of the function. Domain of it. Right? So, then we say that this function is bounded function. Now, <coughs> sandwich principle, sandwich principle means what? Suppose we have the two functions f of x y less than g of x y is less than h of x y. So, if limit x y tends to a b f of x y f of x y is same as limit x y tends to a b a b h of uh, h of x y that means x will have the same limit x will have the same limit then limit x y tends to the middle one g of x y is also same as suppose this is l then okay so then this limit is l <coughs> so if they have the same limit then limit this limit is exist and they have the that means all three have the same limit So, same thing also, we can write this one, tan inverse of xy upon xy, this will be one, limit, xy tends to 0, 0, note that this, tan inverse of xy upon xy, you know that limit x tends to 0, tan inverse x upon x uh, is equal to 1, limit x tends to 0, tan x upon x, same thing here, xy tends to 0, this is also same, okay. <coughs> now, limit along the path now, so that means what? Suppose you have to find this limit x y tends to a b f of x y. Okay, if you have to evaluate this one, so if limit uh, you have to choose a path passing through the point a b now, you have to choose a path passing through the point a b. Choose the path passing through a b means what? You have to choose any curve passing through a b. Okay, so if this limit is exist and same, then we are saying that the limit is exist. That means if the limit along the different path is same limit along any path is same then the limit will be exist otherwise limit along the different path is different then limit do not exist so this is the meaning of this one <coughs> that means what suppose limit x y tends to 0 0 x square minus y square upon x square plus y square suppose we have this suppose we have this function okay so now whether this limit is exist or not this is the problem okay whether this limit is exist or not so when we say that this limit is exist, this limit is limit along different path is different, then we say that the limit is exist. Then we say that the limit is exist. So the first basic path we have to choose y is equal to mx. If we do not work, and know that, so if there is x square plus y square. So, as we choose the polar path, so this we know that this is x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. 
So if x square plus y square is equal to r square, this is a circle. Then you have to choose the path x is equal to r cos theta. If it is a square, then you have to choose the path x is equal to a cos theta, y is equal to uh, a sin theta. So this is r square. Then this is the polar coordinate. This is the polar path. Uh, so if denominator is x square plus y square, try to do for this one. If your limit is depend on theta, uh, then this limit does not exist. So this is what then this is what here. Uh, if you put x is equal to r cos theta, so here r square, r square, r square, r square everywhere, r square will be there. So if you take the r square, r square common, then what we get then uh, cos square theta minus sin square theta upon cos square theta plus sin square theta that means one. So limit this will be what r tends to zero then. If you choose this x is equal to r cos theta, then limit r tends to zero, and this is independent on r. So limit will be what cos square theta minus sin square theta. <coughs> so limit depend on theta. That means limit does not exist. So here what this does not exist. So if limit does not even though for continuity limit does not exist, function will be not a continuous here. Okay. So the simple part is so, so try always try for uh, this also. Okay. Suppose if you don't mind uh, if, if you don't know this is polar form. So first you have to start from y is equal to m x. So what happen if you put y is equal to m x? Then this is what m square plus s square. M square x square, M square x square. Okay, y is equal to m x. So now here x square x square x square x square get cancelled now. So this will what then only y is equal to m x means what we have to take only the limit as x tends to zero. So this will what then one minus m square upon one plus m square. And value of this will be what one minus m square upon one plus m square. If the value of limit is depend on m, if the value of the limit is depend on m, then limit does not exist. Okay. So this limit does not exist because overall you can do this one. See, see what is this? X square minus y square upon x square plus y square. So if you choose y is equal to m x part, then this will what? M square x square, m square x square. X square get cancelled. We get one minus m square, one plus m square. <coughs> the value there is no x and y. That means value of this limit is one minus m square upon one. That means the value of limit is depend on m. The limit does not exist. Okay. That means all the limit on a different path is different. Okay. So, if you take this function, what happens? See, x y tends to zero zero. We have to do this orally now. X y upon. So, see the degree is same. Degree of the numerator, degree of the denominator is same. So, surely that limit does not exist. If you choose y is equal to m x part, see that. So, a y is equal to m x part. Then this will be x square. This will be x square, x square. Everywhere x square is there. X square get cancelled. What we get then? Then m upon one plus m square only remains. Okay, that means the value of the limit is what m upon one plus m square. Value of the limit is depend on m. Limit does not exist. Even though this minus will be there, then also limit does not exist. Okay, so this limit does not exist. Uh, suppose this is what limit x y tends to zero zero. X y square upon x square plus y raised to four now here. So that means what here? If you put y square is equal to m x. See, you have to choose the path passing through the origin now. So this y square is equal to m x. This is the path passing through origin. So what happened then? This this is what x m x square or oh, m x now. Y square is equal to m x. Okay. Upon this is what then x square plus y square. Then y raised to four is what then m square x square m square x square. Now see everywhere x square is there. The value of limit is what then m upon one plus m square. That means your limit does not exist. So this limit does not exist even though. Okay. <coughs> Now suppose we have this part. Uh, we have this problem. X y minus y upon x minus one square plus y square. Uh, your part is one zero now. <coughs> you have to choose the part. If you choose this part, x minus one is equal to y now. If you choose. X minus so this is what y is equal to m x or uh, x is equal to m y both are the path path should be the passing through origin okay so what happens then this will what <coughs> so x is equal to what one plus m y okay so one plus m y into y into y minus y upon x minus one is direct this this is what m square y square plus y square okay so what happens this This is what y plus m y square minus y upon uh, I will take y square common 
1 plus m square will be there. Okay. So this y y get cancelled. After that, for the next step, your y square y square also get cancelled, and the value of limit will be what? 1 plus m upon 1 plus m square. That means the limit is depend on m. So this limit does not exist. So I hope that you understand. I know for polar form note that polar form is very strong now. From the polar form, if limit is exist, then we don't need to find another path now. But here, if the if you don't apply the polar form, if limit exists, you have to choose another path. Okay? There may exist another path such way that the limit does not exist. Suppose we have this function now. Limit x y tends to 0, 0. x cube plus y cube upon x square plus y square. Now, now see the denominator is x square plus y square. Always try uh, to evaluate this limit for the polar form now. So if you put x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta. So your x square plus y square will be r square. Now this is r cube, r cube now here. You will take r cube common from here. So if you take r cube from here, r cube upon r square. So r remains now. And limit r tends to 0. r 0 into anything is 0. That means this limit does not right? This limit is exist. If from polar form limit is exist, then it is exist. Okay. So this limit is 0 now. This limit is 0. If you put x is equal to r cos theta, denominator will be r square. This is what r cube cos cube theta, r cube sin cube theta, r cube will be common, then r cube upon r square, 1 r remains, r into cos cube theta minus uh, plus sin cube theta is there. Okay, but uh, this limit will be r tends to 0, r cos cube theta plus sin cube theta, your r is there, 0 into anything is 0. Okay, so this is like this. So limit x y tends to 0, suppose this is sin of x square y square. Okay. What happens this? This will what then? Limit r tends to 0. This will be what? Sin r square upon r square. Sin r square upon r square. So this limit will be what? 0 then. Uh, this limit will be 1 then. This limit is 1. We know that uh, limit x tends to 0 sin x upon x. Whatever this is that the denominator. If angle is that the denominator, then this is 1. <coughs> so limit x y tends to 0 0 tends to 0 0 x square plus y square get it now x square plus y square again if you try for the polar form what happened then this will be r square and ln of r square this is ln of r square Okay. And this will be what limit r tends to 0 now. Now, ln r square, because r is 0, then log 0 does not exist. So, you cannot put, uh, this is not 0 into anything, is not 0. So, this is undetermined form. So, what we have to do? This will be what ln r square. <coughs> uh, I can write this ln r square like this. Okay? ln r square upon uh, 1 by r square. Upon R square. So this will be what then? Twice ln R, twice ln R upon 1 by R square. This is 1 by R square. Okay. And uh, you know the L hospital rule, <coughs> we will differentiate this. So this is 2 upon R now. Derivative of the numerator is that numerator. Derivative of dinner. So this is what? This is nothing but R is 2 minus 2. So what is the derivative of this one? So minus 2 R is 2 minus 3 okay so that means what this is 2 by r uh, 2 by r into see uh, this is 2 by r this will be minus 2 this will be what r cube then right so minus 2 this is what then minus r square this is what minus r square minus r square and this will be the 0 now limit will be what 0 so this limit is 0 limit is exist and this is 0 <coughs> now the main thing of the continuity now continuity so when we say that a function is continuous this is the definition f of x y is equal to a b f of x y is equal to f of a b okay so here there is no right hand limit and left hand limit and so on here okay so this is the definition of continuity of two variable function. 
Okay. <coughs> so if f of a b is not defined, is not defined, then the function is not continuous. If this limit does not exist, limit x y a b f of x does not exist. That means the limit along different path is different. The limit does not exist. Then the function is not continuous. Then the function is not continuous. Even though if this is not equal to, then the function will not be continuous. Okay. And uh, uh, if you want to define the epsilon delta definition, epsilon delta. So this will what for given epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that zero less than zero less than root of x minus a square plus y minus b square less than delta implies that f of x y minus instead of l there is f of a b same thing as a limit definition the l uh, instead of l there is f of a b right so if such this happen then your function is continuous at a b So you know that the continuity of the composite function, <coughs> read that. Now suppose we have this function f of x y is equal to x square minus y square upon x square plus y square. Okay. Is it continuous? Is it a continuous? When we say that a function is continuous, if it continues at all points, then that function is continuous. Is it continuous? So, if there is a numerator and denominator, look at the denominator. So, this is what, if x square plus y square is 0, whether this happens, when this happens, only this happens at the 0, 0. Only this happens at the 0, 0. That means at 0, 0, this function is not continuous. So, which one is the discontinuity? 0, 0 is the discontinuity of this function. Only for 0, 0, this function is not continuous. For other function, for other values, it will be the continuous. This will be discontinued only at 0, 0. Okay. So that means 0, 0 is the discontinuity of this function. Okay. Uh, suppose we have this defined this function f of uh, g of x, y, whatever this g of x, y, x square minus y square upon x square plus y square for this is 0, for x, y not equal to 0, 0, and for x, y this is equal to 0, 0. That means what? If the limit is 0, x, y tends to 0, 0. Only problem is of the 0, 0 only. Only problem is here 0, 0. The function is continued everywhere. Only we have to discuss the continuity at 0, 0 this function. So what happened is for x square plus y square is there now. Right? Now see whether this limit, limit x, y tends to 0, 0 is exist or not. Is exist or not. Okay, so now see x, y, this is what uh, the uh, degree of each term is same, y is equal to mx plays the important role here. So if you put y is equal to mx here, so x square, x square get cancelled, uh, the limit will be 1 minus m square upon 1 plus m square, that means limit depend on m, that means limit does not exist, and limit, limit does not exist, then the function will not be continuous. So this is not continuous at 0, 0. Okay, so now next function is what? 3x square y now, suppose. 3x square y. So 3x square y. Okay. Now the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Okay. And the your denominator is x square plus y square. If denominator is x square plus y square, try uh, the uh, try it for the polar form now. If you apply the polar form, your one r will be remains at the numerator. Whatever it may be, one r remains uh, at the and limit r tends to zero of r into something that will be zero. So this limit will be the zero. And 0, this is same. This function is a continuous at 0, 0. This function is continuous at 0, 0. Suppose we have this function g of x, y, z is equal to uh, 1 upon x square plus y square plus z square minus 1. Okay. So, whatever this one, this function is discontinuous only at x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 1. Okay. So, all values of x, y, z, okay, uh, belong to R3 such that, okay, this is, this is the discontinuous. Okay. Now, the function will be continuous if x square plus y square plus z square not equal to 1. 
Okay. If you are x square plus y square, j square not equal to one, then the function is continuous. If you are x square plus y square plus j square is equal to one, then function is not continuous. Because if x square plus y square plus j square is uh, is equal to one, then your denominator is zero. After your denominator is zero, then the function is not well defined. So that means what? So if such type of the function is there, denominator is there. Try to look at the denominator. So like that, your concentration should be at the denominator. Find out the x and y so that your denominator is zero. And for that uh, zero of the denominator, your function will not be will not be continuous. So that is the discontinuity of the function. Okay. So I hope that you understand this one. So try to hmm, see the exercise and uh, suppose we have this function f of x y is equal to mod of x y suppose this mod of x y. So now here what for mod of x y we don't have the denominator. This is everywhere it is well defined. So that means this function is continuous everywhere. This function is continuous everywhere. Suppose we have the mod x plus y or mod x plus mod y again. So no problem for this one. This is well defined everywhere. This function is continuous everywhere. So if you have polynomial function, polynomial function for polynomial function also you don't have any problem. Okay. Now suppose we have this function one upon one plus e raised to x minus y. Now exponential cannot be zero. Exponential cannot be zero. Okay. And exponential cannot be negative also. Right. So this value cannot be negative now. So that means denominator is not equal to zero. That means this function is continuous everywhere. Okay. So I hope that and uh, take the uh, try to solve all the problems from the exercise, right? So I hope that you understand all those things. Okay. Just prepare all those things. Okay. So okay, we will stop here. Thank you.